Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kelvin Johnson. This is Windows 11 tutorial Inside Out Part 14. So I'll be discussing about troubleshooting, backup and recovery in this tutorial. So I'm going to go deep into Windows error reporting, how can we use Event Viewer to actually troubleshoot our device, how do we actually backup and recover our the files if something goes wrong with our device. I will also be showing you how to actually use the Windows 7 backup program to actually backup your files and also we can be, we'll be using our file history and protection files and folders to also recover our files. So whether you like it or not, sometimes something could go wrong with your device. Sometimes we have we have seen issues whereby we install a new device in our workplace and after like just some few days the user start complaining that my device is slow or something is going wrong, Internet um, Explorer or Microsoft Edge is freezing. So something is, is bound to go wrong with your device even if it is after like one two or three like three years or even if it is maybe you just install the device newly but there are always ways to which you can fix the device or you have some alternative options in windows 11 which you can use to actually resolve this problem so in windows, in windows 11 there's actually a, a kind of a built-in troubleshooter which we can use to actually troubleshoot our device so first of all let me go to my settings here I can, I can as well go to my with my start menu and you see we have the settings here so just click on settings so the best option to actually resolve a problem is this when you want to actually search for something in uh, in your windows settings just for example if i click if i type trouble you can see it gives me the option to open or, or to open the, the troubleshoot settings say troubleshoot activation troubleshoot other programs so i can just click on troubleshoot settings and you can see it's actually taking me to my system and then my troubleshoot here we have say recommend troubleshoot preference and it says ask me before running we can say it can run automatically don't notify me run auto automatically and then notify me but i would prefer it to ask me before actually running we say actually say click say recommended troubleshooting history at this moment i don't think i have any history so here we also have the options other troubleshooter so by clicking other troubleshooter you can see we can actually troubleshoot some other problems for example if you're having issues with your internet connection or if you're having issues with your audio with your printers even with window update uh, windows update and some other you can see we have some different options here which you can actually troubleshoot so let's just actually try to troubleshoot uh internet connection so let's say you have internet connection on your device but at one moment your internet connection stops working and you try to actually figure out what the problem is you do a ip config reset release and nothing is working so let's try to run this troubleshoot and see if it can actually detect what the problem problem is but sometimes when you run this troubleshooter this troubleshoot it actually runs through your device then it can actually check and see if it can actually if it finds a problem and it gives you the alternative to actually fix that problem so here it says troubleshoot my connection to the internet i'm going to click troubleshoot so it's trying to actually detect what the problem is and here it says troubleshoot could not identify the problem indeed because i have access to the internet so here i can actually click close so the same thing for your printer i can actually just click on run and it's actually try to detect what the problem is and then tell gives me the options of what the problem actually is so here it says it's trying to tell me actually which of the printer um, i want to actually solve which printer is having the issue here we have different options so if you have like two or three more printers on your installing your device it's actually going to list those printers here you can see i have one hp laserjet 4350 so i can select this printer and click next so it's checking for network it's checking the queue if there's any error checking the uh, errors you can see troubleshoot could not identify the problem indeed i don't have any issue with this printer so here you guys how you actually try to troubleshoot and see if you have any issues with your hardware device or your software device so here if i go to windows update under my system settings 
and you can see we have the advanced option in windows update under the advanced options i click the advanced options and in the advanced option you can see we have some option to actually resolve our windows 11 issues so let's say your windows 11 is not stable you are actually receiving receiving like an error message a blue screen on your device here we have the option to actually recover say reset advanced startup we can restart apps for example if apps are not working as the software are not working very well we can restart it or we can actually say it's configure update policy but let me just click on the recovery and by clicking recovery you can see it says fix problem without resetting your pc says resetting can take a while first try resolving issues by running troubleshooter so if i click let me just click on that you can see it says it gives me it comes to me it takes me back again to where i was before that the troubleshooting and if i go back again to system or well, let me just go back into update and uh, go back into advanced options here we have the recovery so here it says we have the option to actually reset this pc or we can actually do an advanced st um, startup so when i do an advanced startup so what means it says do a reset your device to change startup settings including starting from a disk or usb drive so let me just try to restart now and see which options we have so i'm going to say restart so it's actually going to restart my device so let me just try to pause the device and come back again when it's trying to restart so you are zero percent is dead so please keep your computer on so it's going to take me to about 100 percent before it can restart my device so at this moment my device is trying to restart so it's telling me so please wait so let's just wait and see what happens because it goes from zero percent to 100 percent and then your device will restart So when my device restarts, you can see it actually gives me some options to actually troubleshoot my PC. So if you are having like a blue screen, uh, you know in the past when you try to actually restart your device to get to this option, you need to press the F8 but push button on your, on your keyboard or the F12 button, the F12 on your keyboard. But at this moment in Windows 11 or Windows 10, you just need to actually restart your device to go to that option reset restart the device and it will take you to choose an option it says continue exit and continue to windows 10 we can actually turn off your pc but we can actually reset your pc to uh, to or see advanced options so let me just go to the advanced options here it says reset this pc so let's let you choose whether to keep your or remove your personal files and then reinstall windows but i'll just go to advanced options and under the advanced option, you can see we have the option to actually start up or repair. We can uninstall update. We can do a system restore. We can start up our, our settings. We can actually open the command prompt. Or we can do a system image recovery. Or we can do a system restore. But to be able to do a system restore, you will actually need to create a restore point before your device. Because at this moment, I will not be able to do a system restore. Because the system restore is actually configured on this device so i need to actually create a system restore before i can actually go back again to use a restore point to actually configure the device since fix problem that keeps windows from loading so we can actually just say okay let me just try to fix the problem that keeps windows from running so let me just click on fixed up repair so by clicking fixed or repair let me click that so if you try to diagnose your device and then try to fix actually your device or fix it fix what is actually causing your device not to actually start normally or what's actually causing the blue screen of death so let's just wait for some time for this actually to diagnose it's trying to attempt to repair your device actually so it says I just wait so it's actually starting my device at the moment You can see it says please keep your computer on so it's about 89 percent it's going to go to about 100 percent and here we go my device just started so if you're having issues with your device let me put on my pin so if you have an issue for example you have a startup issues and remember during startup your device uh, freezes go to um, go install the blue screen of death so you can actually use that option to actually fix the startup 
or fix some other errors during starting. So let me go back again to my settings and see which of the other options we have to actually reset or solve our solve issues in Windows 11. So if I go back again to Windows Update and I go back again to Advanced Options and in Advanced Options I will need to go to Recovery and here you see it says reset this this PC. So choose to keep or remove files. So when I click reset this PC, you can see it gives me the option to actually keep my files or remove everything on this device. So if, for example, you want to actually um, remove everything on your device, reconfigure your Windows, you can actually do this by just removing everything from your device, and it's going to actually. Or you can keep everything, keep, say remove apps and settings, but keep your files. So you can remove all the apps on your device, but you can also as well keep your files. So let me just click close. And also, if for example, you are having some issues with Windows, for example, Internet Explorer keeps crashing or Microsoft Edge. And um, no, Microsoft Edge, because Internet Explorer is not actually installed in Windows 11. So if I go to my Start menu and I type Internet Explorer, you can see it's not working anymore in Windows 11. It has been removed. So Microsoft is actually forcing all the users to use Microsoft Edge. So if I go to my Start menu, and I type Event. Yeah, you see we have the option called Event Viewer. So let me just click on Event Viewer. So here it says we have the Event Viewer. So it's to, to view that that uh, to view events that have occurred on your computer, select the appropriate source log custom view. So what happens is this: if anything you do on your device, from the moment you put on your device till the moment you put it off, every single click you click on your device is being actually registered an event viewer so from the event viewer you can actually check um, if someone logged onto your device which application was installed which uh, application is causing issues which application is giving you error which software or which hardware is actually causing issues on your device so if i go to windows log you can see we have different options in windows log we have the applications we have security we have setup system and at the forward Event. Forward event should always be, I think that should be no event because you need to create a forward event before all the events will be forwarded to this event via to your device. Your device is going to add like a dump where other events are being forwarded to your device. So if I go to applications, you can see on our applications we have all the different applications that runs on this device. So here you see if I let me try to expand this a little bit. Um, let me just I just change okay and let me, let me filter by date um, yes okay I think I need to go up yeah. Yeah, filter by date again okay that is today so here we have you you can see we have so we have the source and you can see we have the edge update it says service stopped we have our security center so we have some actually we have the VMware upgrade helper so here you can see some detailed information of what is going wrong on your device. You can see all these are actually information, but we can go if I go to security. On a security, you can see that um, if you log on to your device or you log off to your device, log off to your device, it's actually going to save all the information here. So let me just try to expand this a little bit. So you're going to, it's going to save all the information here. Here you can see credential managers, credential we are read, and also if I Try to go down a little bit you can see some other information about the security of this device so if you scroll down so every information everything you do actually on this device is being recorded so if i go to setup you can see we have some other information and here we have the system also you can see we have some system and here we have some error message some warning and here we have an error message which says unable to start the dc com server so if for example you want to actually filter this um this event because right now i have about 2387 events so i can actually just click click on system and here we can actually click on filter the current log so it says um logged end of time we can actually change to a custom range or oh, let me just close that so we can actually change to any time like the last 12, 12 hours last hour or we can actually say, okay, I want every error message, or I want only the error message and critical warning 
and I'll click OK. You can see that it just actually reduced, and you can see at this moment I'm receiving only the critical, so the system has rebooted without cl cleanly shutting down first. And here we have some event log. The previous system shutdown was unexpected, so you can see that the shutdown, everything you do on this device is actually being recorded. Windows update client installation failure, and also if I scroll down, you can see the Windows update client. You can see we have some installation failure. So I can actually just um, the filter. I can actually clear the filter, and you can see we have all our event viewer back. So the same thing with application. We can decide to say, okay, I want to actually filter the current log and only error message, and you can see if you have some error message. So it only gives me. So let me just see. I think I can clear the log. Let me just cancel that. So here I don't have the option, to, the option to actually filter. Okay, I can't filter the applications. I think I can only filter the current log. Let me try to do something and see. Okay, I can't filter the application on this virtual machine. Oh no, okay, it's, I think it takes some time actually for this to get. Okay, I was able to filter it. Here you can see by just clicking the filter, I was able to actually filter all in the error. You can see the application errors. And then we have different application errors and we have the msdtc client 2 failed tr trying to get the state of the cluster node so we have some different error messages so here you can actually check the error and see which of this error is actually causing issue on your device so let me actually clear the filter and also if for example you have like tens of thousands of log and you think at this moment you don't have an issue with that device you want to actually start with a clean log what we can actually do is if i right click on the application here we have the option to clear the log so by clearing the log it actually gives me the option to actually save before i clear but i can just clear the log and you can see right now all my events are zero i can actually do the same for the system i can clear as well but if I go to my, let me go to security and I right click, you can see we have the option to actually save all um, all the events. You can save this event because I actually did this at my work today. I think um, I live in Belgium and the company I'm working for is an international company. So there was a user in the United States, they're having actually issues with an application. So I've contacted the vendor of that software, of that software and they say that they don't have any reports of issues with the software. And this software is working with Silverlight which of course does is not compatible with Microsoft Edge and it's only it's only working with Internet Explorer. But the users are complaining that the users uh, Internet Explorer always crashes like five to ten times every day. They will need to close and restart the app application again. So we are trying to actually troubleshoot where the problem comes from. So because of the time difference with between Belgium and the United States, because when the user is coming starting work, I think I have just about 30 minutes to troubleshoot before I actually go home. So what I did today is I actually saved the event of the application on our Windows on our server so I can actually troubleshoot what the problem is. So let me just go to save this to document and just call this um, event errors and click on the document and click save. It says no display information. It says asking if you want to actually save this in, um, in a different language we can actually save it with also with french but let me just use no display information and click ok so if i go to my let me open file explorer and i go to document you can see i have the event error there so if i double click this so if we try actually to open that event error message let's just try to open that so it's trying to expand. So you can see that the event view I just opened when I saved here's the event error. As you can see, it says saved logs. So it just opened and it opened in a new um, in a new event view. And this is my previous one I opened, which I was working on. And this is the new one I just got opened. Let's just go back again. You can see it says saved logs. So that is how you actually saved that event and. Opponent. So let me close that and also if I right click again you can see we also have the option to actually import a custom view so I can actually import a custom view or we can actually go to let me go to the properties of this event you can see um, it says the locks you can set the lock size you 
can see the maximum lock size of this event and also you can see with when it was assessed and when it was created so you can see it says created on the 31st of july that's when i installed this device so let me just close that and also if i here we have the applications and service log so let me expand that and let's see what we have there you can see we have some we have the hardware event here you can see we have some zero event internet explorer here we can see what i don't have internet explorer on this device but every log of internet explorer, explorer will be actually saved there but we have more and more event log so if i click i just unfold the microsoft and here we have we have the client we have the system but we have windows and you can see we have a lot more events we can actually work on so let me just scroll down you can see we have the different event log we can actually work with so it's a lot of events so if you're having any issues with your device definitely that event will actually be saved in the event viewer and you can actually uh, view that event and see what the problem is on your device here you can see we can go to the microsoft and the, wi the windows logon you can see says the microsoft windows win logon here you can actually see all the different information about the windows logon and also here even if you are using like microsoft intune all everything will be saved on this device here we have the store you can see the microsoft windows store event and here you see we have all the different log of microsoft store which are actually running behind the same so let me close let me close the event viewer so and also if for example you are having issues with your uh, with your disk um, for example you have some performance issues your disk uh, your windows 11 is very slow or you're having some also some error message like the blue screen and you try to actually reset your device and it does not fix the problem what we could also do is let me go to my let me go to file explorer and if I open File Explorer and I go to my disk PC and I right click on this the local disk and here we have the properties. So in properties, if I go to, which you can see we have the option called the disk cleanup. So here we can do some disk cleanup to actually clean up our device so you can see it goes very fast. Here we have some options we can actually clean. So let me just scroll down a little bit. You can see we have, I can actually delete some temporary files. We can actually see if we have some other okay we can delete the delivery optimization files so we can actually delete some other temporary internet files we can actually delete them as well and then click ok and delete files so this will be deleted so if i go to tools and here you can see we have error checking so you see this option will check the drive for the for file system errors so click check so you see you don't need to you don't need to scan this drive we have found we, we have not found any errors on this device you can still scan the drive for errors if you want so which means it's telling you that there are no errors found on this device so you don't need to scan this drive but if you wish to scan you can actually scan the device but if there are errors on this device it's also going to tell you that we found some errors you need to scan your device for this to be actually be fixed but also if you think this did not solve the problem what we can actually also do is we can actually use let me if I go to this my search and I search for the command prompt I'm going to start the command as an administrator click yes and here we have the option what we we'll call the check disk so if I do the check this and I enter a question mark you can see it's going to give me all the different options I have to actually check this disk so it says uh, if I check the disk and I enter the F it's going to fix errors on the disk so it's going to locate bad sectors and recover recovery readable, readable information so if, for example I do the check disk fix and then arrow to enter you can see it's going to take says check the next time the system restarts so while you are using your device definitely it's not going to check your disk it's going to check this when the system we start so I'm just gonna do for now I can actually say yes or I can just say let me just enter no for now because if I do yes you restart your device it's gonna take some time to actually check your entire disk for this to actually to be fixed and you can see we also have some options it says um, scan NTFS only run an online scan on the volume you can say um, see if you do if you enter the say options 
it says keep checking of cycle within the folder structure so you can actually just read it and see which other options you have so i'm just going to go for the no for now so it's going to come back again to my system 32 and also if i let me just let me minimize the command prompt and also you can see we have the option we'll call optimize and defragment your drive so if you use your drive all the time but most of the time this is actually configured to run automatically so do you want to restore the fault optimization removed or let me just keep customized settings and let me just open the optimization so here you can see that it says seven percent fragmented fragmented so what i need to do is i will need to actually analyze this device let's say we have the we can also do go for the advanced view but let me just uncheck that on this moment and let me just try to analyze this but here you can see it says the schedule optimization is on i can change the settings you can see it runs weekly so but let me just try to actually analyze this device so it's trying to analyze it's going to analyze the device the, the, the disk again and see if there are files which are fragmented and it's going to give me you can see it says five percent fragment fragmented so let me just click optimize so now it's going to actually optimize my device and defragment all the fragmented files and place them at the right location so you can see it's tried to, again to analyze and before it starts to fragment so yeah you can see that the files are now being Relocated, it says one percent is being relocated, and now it's going very, very fast to so relocate about 72 percent. So it's trying to relocate all the files which have been now, it's trying to defragment and then consolidate, relocate all the files which have been actually fragmented. So it may take some time, but depends on how, um, how much files have been actually been fragmented. So let's just leave this discount or to always run behind the same the same So let me just close this and then close this as well So let's say if sometimes things may go wrong with your device and definitely I will assure you 100% Things will definitely go wrong with your device one day whether you like it or not It's like human being we are not made to last forever just like your device is not also made created to last forever if not the um the the the, the companies which are selling uh, laptops or um hardware uh, desktop will not be selling their product any anymore so if you work for a company actually and uh, like the company i work for i think so i think that the, the lifespan of those device la laptops or devices um hardware is about four five years after four five years um the lat laptop or desktop will be actually be place so but sometimes if your device crashes or is giving you some air some problem or you actually install an update and it started to cause issue after like one or two months we can do what we call actually a system restore so if I go to my set start menu well, let me just go to search and I try to click search for restore and you can see it says create a restore Point. at this moment i have not actually created any restore point for this device so i'm not actually be, i will not be able to restore um, the device to a previous um to its previous state or previous um date when the things was going well with this device but i'm using a virtual machine so once in a while i do create a snapshot so i can actually go back and get to my snapshot to when the device was working well so but if this is a physical device I will not be able to create snapshots of that device so i can actually restore go to a restore point and restore my device so let me try to open here you can see i have the m drive and i have the c drive well i will need to actually i want to actually because i don't have any file or folders on the m drive so let me go to the c drive and in the c drive it says you can see the potential it says off so if i go to click configure here i can actually turn on the um the restore settings and it says what is the maximum use of this at this moment it says two percent i can i can actually increase it to like 20 gigabytes or we can actually increase it more to even i think to about to the maximum capacity of the disk drive i think the disk drive i go to my file explorer let's see how much is this disk drive you can see it's about almost about 100 gigabytes so what i can do is i can actually say okay use about let me just about 20 or let me say 21 percent of this i think i can actually move it to like 15 percent or 
let me just say 20 percent or 21 percent of my disk drive and also if for example you've been doing some restore points for a lot of time and you can actually delete all the restore points for this drive which of course is going to create some space on your device so i'm going to say turn on system protection i click apply and i'm going to say okay and you can see at this moment we have as uh, the um, our system restore is actually turned on so if i click system restore so it's trying to actually see, see restore system files at this moment no restore points have been created so what i need to do is uh, let me just create a restore point so let me just give this a name and um, today this is actually 19 08 and click create so it's actually trying to create a restore point so it depends on how um how long ago you've installed your device on how often you use your device it may take some time for the restore point to be created so let me just pause this device and this video and come back again when the restore point has been created so now you can see that the restore point has been created successfully so let me just let me close this and here we have we can now do a system restore if we want to actually you can see we can have the option to actually do a system restore but i'm just going to actually just click ok and then close that for now also in windows 11 or windows 10 there's what we call the file history so if for example um you delete a file from your device or you and you or you something goes wrong with that file you are working with so like an excel file or word document you can always go back to the file history to actually retrieve that file but if you don't have if file history is not configured on your device you will not be able to retrieve the file um, the file history of that file so let me go to my search menu again search menu and then look for file history let me just file history okay here we see we have the option called file history which is in control panel so click file history and you can see the file history is actually in control panel so if i go to settings so let me just try because here you can see that some settings are still in control panel but microsoft is trying to actually move everything from the control panel to actually to our system settings so if i type for file history see say restore your file with file history so if i click on it and let's see what happens so you can see it's going to take me back again to my file history which of course is trying to take me back again to control but i say file history is currently turned off say configured file history so if i click configure file history you can see it takes me to control panel so here in control panel you can see that the file history is actually turned off so first of all you will need to turn it on so turn on file history you can see right now it's turned on and again you need to actually see select the right the right you can see that it's actually changed this a this drive actually it's no more the a drive it's actually the m drive so select your drive here you can see we have the m drive so definitely it would not want to save your file history to actually to your local drive but just select the m drive and then we have to click ok or we can add a network location so that in case something goes wrong with your c drive you always have the, the a backup or an option where you can actually retrieve your files so just click select the, the m drive and then click ok so do you want to move your existing files to i'm going to say yes here you can see that our drive the m drive has just been selected and it's actually turned on it's a file history is on we can actually run it now you can see run now so it's trying to run and it says file history is saving copies of your files so we can actually stop it so we here we have the option to actually exclude folder we can go to advanced settings and let me just close that so in the advanced settings it says save copies of files every six hours we can say every three hours we can also save every 12 hours or every 10 minutes so let me just select every 12 hours or we can do daily but depends on your situation depends on how often you work with your device and files or excel or word document so you can always say every three hours if you wish and you can say keep safe version you can also select one years one year two years or forever until space is needed so if i select forever but make sure you have a lot of space we can also clean up the versions every files we have virtually available 
cleaned so let me just go let me cancel that and go back again to my options here we have it says restore personal files we can actually restore our personal files or we can actually exclude folders in which we don't want to actually here you can see the picture is being excluded we can actually add other folders to be excluded i can say well just just add the video and we can do that we can now click on save changes here you can see our folders um, has been excluded and also we have the option to actually we can record it says see also recovery we have the option to say create a recovery drive open a system restore or we can configure a system restore so the system restore is just what i call i just configured we can open the system restore from there and also we can create a recovery drive so what happens is if i say create a recovery drive it says do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device we need to say yes so you can see it says even if your pc can start you can use a recovery drive to reset it or troubleshoot problem so what does a recovery drive does a recovery drive is actually a drive that actually allows you to actually reset or recover your device if your device is having issues when it wants to start it says backup system files to the recovery drive so now we need to actually click next and mind you, you will need to actually insert a USB drive because you cannot use your system drive or your C drive as a recovery drive. So it says, please wait while you try to re discover a recovery drive on your device. So it's here, when it tries to actually connect, so it will actually check if you have a USB flash drive inserted into your device. Here it says, the, it says connect a USB flash drive. The drive must be able to hold at least a 16 gigabyte and everything on the drive will be deleted. So at this moment I don't have any flash, any drive on that on this device. So which means that you need to actually insert a USB drive that's more than 16 gigabytes and of course that drive, that USB drive will be used to actually restore your device if something goes wrong with your device. So I'm just going to actually click con cancel and we can go back to file history options and here it says when you see we went in the file history it says a system image backup so we can actually click, go and just click let's try to click a system image backup here it says um under the control panels it says backup or restore your files here it says uh, we don't have any backup at this moment we can create a system image we can create a system repair this so okay let me try to set up a backup so it says trying to start up starting windows backup but mind you it says the backup and restore windows 7 so they're actually using this sort of a windows 7 backup mode to actually back up your device so it's now it gives me two options it says select where you want to back up your device definitely it will be crazy to actually back up your your, the, your your system on a C drive, then it then it it doesn't make any sense because when something could goes wrong with your device, then everything definitely you're going to lose all your files. The only reason why you are trying to back up a file is because when something goes wrong with your laptop or your desktop or your C drive, you will still have a backup of that file from an external drive. Even this the the M drive and this device, you can see it says the M drive. The M drive as, as well is actually not even a backup because the M drive is still locally on this device. So when something goes wrong with my device, definitely I will still have the M drive which is locally on this device. Except the M drive is actually attached to a different drive, not the C drive or not your local CD. It's attached to a different drive or to a network file. You can say we can actually save onto a network if you have a network configured you need to browse to the server and to that location share and then back it up there so we need to actually also create a kind of a password username and password to actually recover our backup so i'm going to actually cancel that so you can see that it says the drive does not have enough space to store a system image because the system image is actually going to take a lot of your of your backup so if i go to my file explorer and in my file explorer when i go to the c drive here you can see uh let me just click on this pc you can see at this moment i'm actually consuming almost 38.9 gigabyte from the almost 100 gigabyte i have on my c drive no i'm sorry it says about 39 38.9 GB is actually free from the 100 GB I have. So you can see it's going to take a lot of my space, a lot of space 
to actually configure that image of this uh, of this device or to back up that image so definitely you will need a lot of space before you can actually create a system image or, or backup to um, your, your system to an external hard drive but the best option I will actually advise if you want to back up your files or your back up your folders, your files, your software or any document is actually to back it up in one drive so because when you back up your files in one drive definitely your files will always be accessible to you 247 because when you um, back up your file for example to an external drive or to a USB drive which of course I would still advise to have an, and that should be an extra backup Definitely, if you want to actually restore your file, for example, you are traveling, you need to take your USB drive along with you. Something can go wrong with your USB drive. You can actually lost your bag where your USB drive is, is drive is actually kept, or your USB drive can actually be stolen. But when you have your files back up in one drive, let me just close this. Back up in one drive. Here I have my one drive files. One drive configured on this device. When you have your backup configured on one in one drive, so you have access to your backup files 247. You can actually connect to your backup files in anywhere in the world. You can actually go to any browser, take even your telephone, take any laptop, take a friend's laptop, actually access your file in any part of the world 247. You can even go to a local cafe and then access if you can access your email address, you can always access your OneDrive file. So my or the best option I will recommend, which also Microsoft also recommend this option as a backup, as, as the best backup alternative, um, which is of course your OneDrive. You have the we have the local OneDrive. If you are using a Hotmail or um, a, a, a Hotmail, if you are even using a Gmail account, you always have a OneDrive, which of course you will not be able to configure this on your Windows device. You definitely need the Microsoft account, but you can actually take this file and just move it to your Gmail OneDrive or, or to your Gmail backup or you can actually copy configure OneDrive on your Windows 11 device and then move those files to your OneDrive and then they will be there at any time you can see here we have the option you can see my status here definitely at this moment all this file are actually back up to the cloud so when I need to actually um, when I need uh, this file to be uh, available locally on this device at any time I can just click on right click on this device and it says always keep on this device when I say always keep on this device which means that the file will always be available offline on this device so if I don't have access to the internet I will still be able to open this file but if I don't have access to the internet I will not be able to open this file because you can see that the, the file is in the cloud so for this file to be, be open to be able to be open on this device it will need to access the cloud which is which of course is goes through the internet and without the internet I will not be able to open this file so but to me the best option is to always back up your file in the cloud so thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video that this is actually all about troubleshooting backup and recovery I'm gonna do a different video a short video on how to actually recover your software or recover your files using a specific software so I'm actually going to leave the link in this video which of course will show I will, I'm going to show you which software which of course I'm using that software as, uh, as well myself which software you can use to actually recover your files in case you delete your files from your recycle bin thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video my name is Kelvin Johnson and please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel for more IT videos and if you think this video has been of any help to you you can always just take your time and give me a thumb up and also leave a comment below and I will reply to you as quick as possible I'm also going to leave my personal email address in the, in the description of this video so you can always send me a personal email if you have any problem with Windows 10, Office 365, Windows Server, Microsoft Intune, SSTM, BitLocker and all and I'm also going to reply to you as quick as possible and please don't forget to watch the other part of this Windows 11 tutorial inside out um, doing and I believe that one of this video of course of this video can be of great help to you so if you watch this video from part 1 to part 17 definitely you're going to learn a lot and you go and you, you're going to be the guru of Windows 11 or uh, which of course this training can also be applied to Windows 10 thank you very much
and hope to see you in my next video which i'll be discussing about windows security and privacy thank you very much and goodbye